welcome to the Geomestic channel. In the next two lessons, we're going to be looking at a couple of special right triangles that will help us lay the groundwork for understanding the basics of trigonometry. To do this, all we're going to need is the Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of algebra. With that, we'll start to see some really important patterns develop, and these will help us navigate lots of different types of triangle problems moving forward. Before we get started though, if you would go down to the description, you can click on the link for some guided notes. You can follow along and write some things down as we go. Now, what makes a right triangle special? There are two that we're going to be investigating. The first being the isosceles right triangle. And the second we'll go through in the next video, so I'll keep you on the edge of your seat there. Now, the isosceles right triangle, which looks like this, um, the definition of isosceles being two sides that are congruent to one another. You've got the two legs that are congruent. Third side there is the hypotenuse. Now we also know that um, the base angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent as well. So the base angles are the two angles that are opposite of the two congruent sides. So these two angles are the same. And since we do know that this is a right triangle, every triangle has a total sum of 180 degrees. We've already got a 90 degree angle down here, so what's left is 90 degrees, 180 minus 90 is 90. And since we've got these two angles congruent to one another, what's left, all I have to do is divide by two. And that shows us that these two angles here are gonna be 45 degrees each. And that's why we call this um, isosceles right triangle, we call that the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Okay, so this is the 45, 45, 90, based on its angles. So you got 45 here, you got 45 here, and of course this is 90 degrees. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to investigate this just starting with some numbers. So let's say that in this 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the two legs were of length two. Maybe I wanted to know what was the length of the hypotenuse. Now, in the previous video, we did um, the Pythagorean theorem. We know that if we've got two sides of a right triangle, we can figure out the third using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, your a and your b again are the two legs. They're interchangeable. In this case, they're the same, so it doesn't really matter which one is which. And the c is the hypotenuse. So if we do a quick little Pythagorean theorem problem here, we know that the two legs, a squared plus b squared, so we'll say two squared plus two squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is x. Okay, so let's work through it. Two squared is four. Two squared is four, whoops. Which is equal to x squared. Four plus four is eight. x squared equals eight. And at this point, to solve for x, to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides. Square, square root, and they kind of cancel each other out. I'm going to flip this around. We're going to have x equals the square root of 8. Now again, depending on your problem, you might um, be able to stop there. You might type that into your calculator if you're estimating a distance or something like that. But in this case, uh, we're going to investigate kind of a pattern here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this into simplest radical form. Simplest radical form being um, we're going to simplify this square root of 8 into its lowest terms. To do that, a couple different ways. We've done a video about it, um, but we're going to break this up into two factors. I know that 8 is just 4 times 2. And since I can break up roots like so, square root of four times the square root of two, it means the same thing. And then knowing that the square root of four is just two, we've got x equals two times the square root of two. All right, so in this case right here, where I have the legs of two, the hypotenuse is just two times the square root of two. Okay, so hold on to that answer for a second. So think about the legs being two, the answer is two squared two. So I'm gonna leave that there for a second, but I'm gonna change the length of the legs to three. And we're gonna do the problem again. So if the lengths of the legs were three, the hypotenuse is missing, 
Again, it's gonna be set up the same way as if they were two. I've got the Pythagorean theorem that says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I run through it again. Three squared is nine, nine plus nine is 18. And then square root both sides. We'll have x equals the square root of 18. I'm gonna skip a few steps just for the sake of space here. Um, the square root of 18 is the same thing as nine times two, the square root of nine times two. And the square root of nine is just three. So I've got x equals three times the square root of two. So in this case, the legs were three. The hypotenuse doing the Pythagorean theorem gets you three times the square root of two. Can you see the pattern yet? I'll do one more quick one. Skipping a lot of steps here. So let's say the legs were four. Doing the same thing we did here, four. is the legs. Four squared is 16, 16 plus 16 is 32. X squared equals 32. 32 is really just 18 times two. So I've got X equals the square root of, or sorry, not 18, 16. 16. And the square root of 16 is four. So I've got X equals four root two. Okay, so if you haven't seen the pattern by now, uh, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. When the leg was two, the hypotenuse was two root two. When the leg was three, the hypotenuse was three root two. When the leg is four, the hypotenuse is four root two. So you can see that the leg, the length of the leg, shows up right here in the front. And at the end, we always get this root two. Okay, so the pattern here is that the, the length of the hypotenuse always seems to be the length of the leg times the square root of two. Okay, and that is gonna hold true throughout. So if I generalize this here, and you can see that it works no matter what the length of the leg is. Let's say, uh, we'll do it this way. Let's say the length of the leg is x, it's the same, and the hypotenuse was y. So generalizing this idea, if I say, with the Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, I know that x squared plus x squared is really just two x squared. And then if I square root both sides, again, anything inside this square root, if I'm multiplying, I can kind of break that up. And I can say this is really just two times the square root of x squared. So two square root of two x squared, square root of x squared equals square root of y squared. So I'm square rooting both sides. But now this, the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of two is just the square root of two. So I've got x times the square root of two equals y. The hypotenuse is equal to x times the square root of two. The hypotenuse y is equal to the leg x times the square root of two. Okay, so this holds true regardless of what the length of your leg is. We know that the hypotenuse is just the leg times the square root of two. So this is what the 45, 45, 90 right triangle theorem states. Okay, so it says in a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the legs are congruent. Okay, the legs are the same. And the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of two times the length of the leg. Okay, so if I write it out in easy to, easy to digest terms here, let's do it this way. Let's say the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two. Okay, that's really what we're getting at. Hypotenuse equals leg root two. So our general formula, this pattern that holds true in all 45, 45, 90 right triangles, we can use this then to kind of make these triangle problems a little bit easier. We can kind of use it as a shortcut. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. Start with a real easy one. So 
we got a right triangle, we'll say it is uh, an isosceles right triangle, the legs are the same, those two base angles are equal, and let's say the length of the leg was six. And we were trying to find the hypotenuse. Now in the last problems, uh, we were using the Pythagorean theorem, we're going a squared plus b squared equals c squared to get that x value. But because we have this property that says the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 is just equal to the leg times the square root of two, we don't have to do that Pythagorean theorem problem. We can just say, well, the hypotenuse is what we want, that's x. We know that's equal to the leg, which is six times the square root of two. Well, we've just solved our problem. The leg times the square root of two is the hypotenuse. It's just six square root of two, that's all we got. Okay, so knowing this property, we can take a problem that we would have to do some Pythagorean theorem, work through it all, um, simplify our radical at the end. We don't have to do all that work. The leg times the square root of two is the hypotenuse, that's it. Okay, try another one. Make it look a little trickier here. So let's say the leg is three times root two. So it's already got a root in the length of the leg. Doesn't change how we do the problem. Uh, changes how we maybe simplify our answer. But still, same idea holds. The hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two. So the hypotenuse again is missing. We don't know what it is. The leg here is three root two. So the leg times the square root of two is what we're after. Okay, so if we think about how to simplify um, problems like this where we have roots and whole numbers, just remember that anything under a root, if we're multiplying, I can multiply with anything else under a root. The three we're gonna keep by itself because that does not have a root over it. So the three stays. Square root of two times the square root of two is really the square root of four. So I can multiply those together and put them under the same root. And since I know the square root of four is simply two, I can get my answer as six. So x here is equal to six. That's the length of the hypotenuse using this little formula. Okay, hypotenuse equals leg times root two. We'll do one more example. Okay, so again, 45, 45, 90. Okay, I think you can see what's different about this one. This time, we know the hypotenuse but we're missing the legs. So we've got X and Y for the two legs. Okay, you should recognize that the legs are in fact the same. I put X and Y just to maybe throw you off a little bit, but they are gonna be equal. X and Y are gonna be the same. Okay, so think about this one. If we already have the hypotenuse, how do we get back to the length of the legs? My formula says the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two. Okay, one way to think about this is, if I multiplied by root two to get to the length of the hypotenuse, how would I go backwards? What's the opposite of multiplying? Divide. Okay, how do you divide by root two? Well, let's take a look. So the hypotenuse is equal to leg times root two. If I plug in the values that I know, I've got the hypotenuse is eight. The leg, we don't know what it is, I'll just call it x, times root two. Okay, so here's where your algebra skills come in. If I've got x times root two, the opposite of multiplying by root two is dividing by root two. So I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by root two. So over here, root two over root two is just one. So I've got one x or just x. And I've got eight divided by root two. Eight over root two. Now again, depending on your problem and what you're doing with your answer, um, if you're, again, estimating a distance or something, you might be able to just type that into your calculator, eight divided by the square root of two, and you should be fine with your rounded answer. Um, maybe this is fine for your answer as well. If you have um, a problem where it just wants an answer, it doesn't matter, it doesn't tell you what, uh, what method to use to get your answer, this might be okay. But typically, um, most circumstances are gonna require you to rationalize your denominator. It's not really mathematically, uh, it's just conventionally we don't like to leave uh, roots in the denominator. So before there were calculators, mathematicians had to have, uh, you know, 
ways to communicate accurately with each other and, and convention just says we want to keep those irrational numbers out of the denominator. So how do we rationalize the denominator? It's pretty simple. Do it over here. If I have eight over the square root of two, we want to get that root two, we want to get that root out of the denominator. To do so, we're going to multiply this by something that doesn't change the value of it. So what can I multiply this by that won't change the value of it? One. How can I express one? Well, a fraction with the numerator and the denominator the same, such as this. The square root of two over the square root of two. This is just one, so I'm not changing the value of eight over root two, but you can see what happens when I multiply these together. Eight times the square root of two is just eight root two. The square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four. What is the square root of four? It's really just two. So I've got eight times root two over two. And finally, I can reduce here these whole numbers, eight and two, I can reduce as four over one. So I really have four root two over one, or just four root two. So I know that my x value and my y value, because they are in fact the same, they're congruent, I've got four root two. All right, so that's it for the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Stay tuned for the second special right triangle in next week's video, or if it's already next week, you can find that video right up here somewhere. As always, if this video is helpful for you, um, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of these videos. And if you can, share it with somebody that you think this might be helpful for as well. I appreciate you watching. Thank you. We'll see you next time.